So into your class and objects or maybe a new project folder if you want, I'm going to create a class and a file called bank account dot dot. Right, so there's my bank account dot dot file and in this class or in this file, I want to create a class called bank account. Now normally any bank account that you open up will have some sort of a balance. So I'm going to have my balance as a private property. And it will give me a problem now here because of null safety. And it says that non-nullable instance field balance must be initialized. But we will initialize it now with the initializer of the constructor. So let's start the constructor. Bank account. Open up the brackets. Inside of it, let's have named parameters. But we only have one parameter. I'm going to set it as required. And that will be double balance. Now still it's not happy because we haven't initialized the balance. So at the end there, just before your semicolon there, we'll add a colon and we'll initialize. So I'm going to initialize the balance, which is the private variable, to the balance that will be passed in using this constructor. Okay. So now how do we use this? Let's go to the main dot dot. I'm going to remove all the data for the house there. And we can go and create Let's say var, let's call it account, equals bank account. And now if I click on that constructor that you can see there for the autocomplete, it will automatically import, let's just remove the house import there, it will import bank account or dot. And that's exactly where my class is situated. So the bank account will have a name parameter called balance, and I can set the balance to whatever I want. Right, so let's go back. Uh, by the way, instead of declaring something as a var there, I could have also said bank account. So this will essentially do exactly the same thing. If I hover over account, you can see it's of type bank account. If I remove this and make it a var and hover over account again, it's still a bank account. So now Dart is just inferring the type. So just remember that, that you can also declare it as the specific type. The same as we could have done var num equals 10. Automatically Dart will see that this is an integer, but I can also declare it as int. And then Dart will also see it as an integer. So it's exactly the same thing. You're declaring a specific type and Dart can still infer your type. Let's go back to the bank account. So we've got a balance that's private, so which means I cannot access underscore balance directly. I need to have a setter and a getter. So let's create the getter quickly. It's a double. I'm going to call get. Let's call it balance. And to get back the balance, I will say underscore balance. And that will return the balance for me. Now let's set up the setter there. It's going to be set balance, same name. I will get an amount passed into it and then set our balance to this amount that was passed in. So you can see it's exactly the same we did with the house class, where we had the getters and the setters. The only difference now is that we only have one property at the top that we are initializing in the constructor, that we're getting using the getter, and we're setting using the setter. Now let's look at some interesting methods that we can also add for a bank account. We could, for example, add void deposit. So if I want to add something to the balance, that's normally called a deposit. I'm depositing some money into my bank account, and whatever I deposit should be added to the balance at the top. So remember, in your bank account constructor, your balance will be initialized. So we can initialize it. I think in main.dart we said it will be a thousand. So that value of a thousand, if we call deposit, we want to add to that balance. So this function or this method will accept a double amount that I want to deposit. And what am I going to do with that amount? I will take the balance. And I will just add to it. So I'm going to say plus equals amount. So I'm going to take the balance and the new value of balance should be the previous value plus the amount. And that's what the plus equal sign will do for me. So that's the deposit method to add something to the balance. Then we can also have a withdraw method. And that method will deduct an amount from the balance. So I can have again the amount I want to withdraw. But now we'll need to do a bit more. So I'm not going to use the fat arrow there. So if it's only one line, fat arrow works 
nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do in this if statement is to just make sure that the balance is still bigger than the amount that you want to withdraw. Otherwise, you'll not be able to draw, withdraw some money. So I'm going to say if the balance, which is the underscore balance, so that's how we declared it at the top, it's private. So that private variable there, if the balance is greater than the amount, then we can withdraw something. So then I'll say the balance minus equals amount. So what will that do? We'll basically take the previous value of balance minus the amount and that will be saved back to balance. Right, so what will be the else there? So the else will be, I think let's make that an equal so you can get to zero. So we can just maybe print out something like insufficient funds to withdraw. And then we do nothing. So we won't try and deduct it. Okay, so this is two void methods. Deposit that will add an amount to the balance. Withdraw that will deduct an amount from the balance if it is possible to do so. All right, so let's save this class and we go to main dot dot and let's say, right, we've got the balance set to a thousand rand there. Now we want to go to the account and we want to deposit. And let's say we want to deposit 4,000 rand. Let's print it out quickly. So I'm going to go to account dot balance. Why is it possible to use balance? You can see I cannot use underscore balance because that's private. This one is private, but using the getter there will return back the balance for me. So I can actually see the balance. So let's print it out, run it quickly. And you can see that the balance is at the bottom 5,000 Rand now. Now let's try and say account dot withdraw. And let's try and withdraw 5,000 Rand. So remember, we've got exactly 5,000 Rand. So let me just copy that one again. Paste it there. Save it. Let's run it again. My balance will be zero. What if I try to withdraw 6,000? Save again. It will print out insufficient funds. Your balance is still 5,000. 